announcements to go through this morning. First, I would like to draw your attention to October 16th, which is next Saturday. We will be gathering to celebrate the life of Patricia Burley McKee, a lifelong member of our church community. We will encourage everyone to attend, including those who never had the privilege of knowing Pat. Both are welcome, both to welcome visitors from out of town and to show our love and support for her son, Scott. Also, today, October 10th, is the 95th birthday of Jean Landing, and Edie is circulating a birthday card for her. She is a longtime member of our church and Bristol community. Several of us have enjoyed visits with her before her return to Florida uh, yesterday. Uh, please, everyone, join Jean's birthday card this morning. <laughs> Coming up, 
October 11th, tomorrow night, is the cabinet meeting at 6 p.m. October 12th, the new beginnings meeting is at 6 p.m. Uh, October 16th is a servant service of remembrance for Pat uh, Burley McKee, which I've already mentioned at 2 p.m. October 17th, next Sunday, is the deacons meeting before church, which I would believe starts at 9 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Nine, Show up at nine, it won't be late. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know about the community bulletin board outside of our church, and it continues to be updated. If you have anything that you would like to be uh, submitted for that, um, contact Linda Ensman. And we have an announcement from Diane Bassage. <clears throat> an unadvertised special. Today, all day, half price sale. Her address is 3711 Flatiron Road. Many, many items sold today. Many more uh, to go. Spread the word to friends and neighbors and family. Best offers accepted. There is a twin bed, almost new, complete with bedding. She needs the room. $25. So if you're interested, uh, sold yourself up there today. There are also many CDs donated to anyone. Just leave a bit of change for the church. And that is from Diane. So that is today after church. Do not leave in the middle of church. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll notice you're gone. <laughs> and thank you to our greeters today, Jean Bidwell and LaRue Fletcher. Are there any other announcements this morning? Oh, oh, sorry. Birthdays this week. Norma Lyons is today. Ann Ward is tomorrow. Daisy Fletcher uh, is 10-12. Kat, our own Catherine Joseph will be on the 14th. Uh, Callie, which is Linda Enson's daughter, is the 15th. And also Laura Burgard is the 15th. And uh, let's see, next Sunday, Deb Footer is the liturgist. That Sally S. and Pat Hustle will greet you. And the fellowship hour is Joan Hall and Beth Thomas. And now, are there any announcements? Beth? We could not have planned today any better. Today is Pathways Through History Day in all of New York State. And the church is going to be open this afternoon for tours of the church and cemetery tours. And I also would like to personally and publicly thank Mr. and Mrs. David Pierce right here. They have spent hundreds of hours refurbishing the cemetery this whole summer. So we're trying desperately to get the church and the cemetery on the National Historic Register. Thank you both. Thank you.
grandchildren, nieces, nephews to be our runners to take the orders and take the bags to the cars. So if you have any of those little people, I mean, well, not tiny people, but, you know, mid-sized people, we'd love to have them help us out. So that's my announcement for today. So there, I, got, I have to rush. Where, where are you off to? Well, I, I'm off to South Bristol because I have to put some leaves and color along the way. Great. <laughs> Okay, I'm afraid to ask if there's any other announcements. <laughs> okay, then we will continue. No matter where you, who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are the United Church of Christ. Let's begin our worship. God, we need, a, we need peace, so we come for quiet. We need to let things go, so we come for forgiveness. Help us to find the blessings we long for as we worship you this morning. Jesus said, follow me. We don't always know what that means. We are on a journey of discovery. We are here because we want to be God's people. We are here because we are broken and we want to be whole again. We are here to celebrate our lives and God's presence in this life. Let us, let us worship God with great thanksgiving. Our opening hymn this morning is Amazing Grace on the insert. Please stand if you are able. I have one very quick announcement. These inserts, uh, if you would, when you leave today, put them in a stack somewhere in the back or something, because we can reuse those. Down the road. So just make a pile in the back. I think there's a table there, is there not? The yes. Yeah, just save them if we can, okay? Thank you.
join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, God, in the, in the weeks, weeks that has passed, we have let go of the rope of our good intentions, averted our eyes from the sorrow or pain of someone else, failed to renew our own physical, emotional, and spiritual resources, made a decision without the guidance of prayer. We have excused these small sinnings without regard to the consequences of all our actions in the world. Forgive us and make us newly self-aware. Plan to bother some conscience in the middle of our lives. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, the assurance of her. God offers forgiveness instead of excuses, and if forgiven, we are strengthened to live as children of God. Thanks be to God. Why can't I fly again? 
and all the other animals in the forest. Said, What's going on with this little bird? What was the creator really here? Did, she, did the creator really touch the wing? Is there really a creator? There were a lot of questions. And so the little bird stayed under the tree and she began to mourn. She began to sing. And at first it was a very sad, sad lament, a very sad story, a very sad song that she was bringing out from deep within her heart. And as she sang, sometimes the, story got, the song got lighter and it just became, and everybody came, all the two-leggeds and the four-leggeds, they all came to hear this wonderful little bird sing. And then she finally understood that sometimes the brokenhearted, yes, they are healed. It just not, may not be the way that we think we should be healed, but we are healed. As she sang her beautiful song for all the creatures in the forest. So, um, let us now say the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us say, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. 
This week we received a prayer request from um, Shar, and Shar said Debbie was taken to the hospital with pneumonia. She was taken to emergency, and uh, they thought she might have also blood clots. And uh, this happened yesterday. And I did talk to Shar this morning. Debbie is home and she's on medications, and there were no blood clots, so all is well that way. But she's going to take it's going to take a while for her to recover. So cards would be really appreciated. Probably phone calls not so much because she's having a hard time speaking. So, and her address is in our books, in our, um, in our directory. I'm sorry? Direct, in the directory, yes. thank you. Uh, and just to repeat it though, it's 5131 Seneca Point Road, and it's Canada 114424. So that's 5131 Seneca Point Road. I'm sure she would appreciate any little note or card. It just makes you feel so much better. And I want to just quote this, and I was going to say this in the prayer and you know later, but Shar said, We feel so blessed for the congregation here in Bristol. We are a family. And she just and then she was weeping. So she truly, truly appreciates all the prayers. So, um, we also received prayer request um, for Diane as she continues her journey and prepares to move to Wisconsin and Catherine's mom in uh, Scotland, who was exposed to COVID and now must spend how many more days? Uh, she, the COVID restriction ends on the 18th. On the 18th. So she's there until the 18th, eight more days. Yeah. In a side um, ward. Yeah, in the hospital. She can't leave the hospital. Um, Kay, you had medical tests coming up this week and we pray for you. And also, we're sorry to hear about your barn moving. Uh, Debbie was, uh, we just mentioned Debbie with the pneumonia. And, um, <clears throat> Gloria, uh, her cousin Jerry, who grieves the loss of his wife Jennifer. So let us say, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Diane asked for continued prayers for Bob, and we're so glad to hear that he is now at Elm um, Manor. At least he's on his way to recovery. And uh, Linda's student, Erin, who recently had a kidney transplant, and she passed away in early October, so we pray for that family. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Sally's from Barbara, who recently was diagnosed with breast cancer. A prayer of thanksgiving for David, who is back to work full time. This is Pat's friend, David, uh, after his knee surgery. Rena asked for prayers for her brother, Don, who recently was hospitalized because of stomach problems. Stephanie prays for hope. A lymph node, <clears throat> excuse me, and her lung has grown. And Pat asked for prayers for a longtime friend, Steve, who died uh, this week from COVID, and his brother Gary, and her brother Gary, uh, who had knee surgery, and for Jim, who sustained a concussion after falling off a ladder. Um, Lord, hear our prayer. Richard asked for prayers for normal. <coughs> Excuse me. Who's having trouble with her back and her hip. <coughs> Excuse me again. Ellie offers prayers of thanksgiving for the health of our congregation and our prayers for all those who need them. And she is so thankful that we are able to offer prayers to God. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Greta, um, as she struggles with her studies and other teen issues, Stephen and Emily, as they step into married life, uh, Pat's cousin, and it's Betty and Dolores. They are cousins. No, friends. Friends. Okay, Pat's friends, Betty and Dolores. And for Janice, who's recovering from COVID, Sandy, who has MS and now is having heart issues. For Dave, who has cancer. Ailey, who figures out colors. May she find peace in her decision. Elaine and Tom, who lost their daughter recently, leaving their uh, son-in-law and granddaughter, our grandson, pardon me. LaRue's brother, Alwyn. For Catherine, as she is away from her family in Scotland, it's got to be so hard. Lord, yeah. <laughs> continued prayers for Chaplain Elizabeth, from, and she's at Thompson Hospital. Uh, Rena's friend Sandy, whose mother passed away. Um, for the family of Mary Lynn's good friend Alan, uh, who passed away at age 41, leaving his wife and two teenage children. And he did pass away from COVID. Um, for all those who grieve the loss of loved ones, may they know comfort in the midst of their grief. And we're glad to hear that Joan's Harmony Circle friends, uh, Lorraine and Phyllis, are doing better. And continued prayers for Wendy and the recovery of Alan and Trevor in Scotland. We pray for their continued recovery. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Don and his family and for Spence and Donna. Uh, we pray for Kathy, who has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, Tony and Lisa, as they come to peace with and calmness with the terms of Tony's illness. Um, we pray for Christina, who's been diagnosed with cancer. And she's beginning a long journey of chemo and radiation therapy. And then she will be followed up with surgery. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our military men and women. And I think of your family, especially Bob, Abby, her husband, your son, and their families who are deployed here at home and around the world. May we stand for them as they stand for us. Uh, we pray for our world leaders and for leadership at home. Uh, for, right, for President Biden, Vice President Harris, and for the members of Congress. May they know God's wisdom. Uh, for our country, may it be healed of its divisiveness. We pray for all those affected by natural disasters, such as the hurricanes and fires and wildfires we hear every day here at home and around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bob. Pat has prayers for Debbie, who's fighting, uh, who's battling kidney failure. Uh, for all the victims of COVID, those exposed to COVID and are quarantining, <clears throat> those currently suffering from COVID, those who are recovering from COVID, and those who have lost loved ones here at home and around the world. And for all the healthcare workers and scientists who are on the front lines fighting this virus and its variants. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Continued prayers for Joy, who is suffering with multiple back issues, Marcia, who's recovering from surgery for a fractured kneecap. We pray for those fighting addictions to alcohol, drugs, and other addictive personality problems, including Jay, Chip, and Stephanie. For Joan, as she continues to heal and gain strength. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Alex as they find their way. Uh, Sarge and John as they recuperate from heart surgery. And of course, we continue prayers for 12-year-old Skylar who is fighting a rare cancer and also for nine-year-old Evie who's recovering from a rare autoimmune disease. For Richie, Brooke, and the girls as Richie recovers from surgery and now continues PT and will soon hopefully be back to work following his accident. And prayers and love uh, and compassion for Paula. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church family members and friends, for Art and Priscilla, Norma and Richard, for Sophie and Logan, Alan and Lois, Lyle, Mary D, Elaine B, uh, Elaine B, um, uh, Sharby, um, Pat S, uh, Marion, Lynn and Jerry, Donna, Debbie L, Beth and Seth, Ed, Mackenzie, Haley and Bella. May God's peace be with them. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Our church family sends prayers of love and mercy to our shut-ins, to Jim and Priscilla S., Faye, Cynthia, Jane, Eleanor, Dorothy, and Alex, and for all those who are living in assisted living or in nursing homes. We pray for their caregivers, their family, and their friends. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our church family offers prayers of strength and courage for all who continue to battle cancer. For Paula, Stephanie, and Don, for Steve, Ellen, and Sherry, for Jeanette, Donna, and Brian, and Roger, may God walk with them on their journeys and with those who care for them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks, O God, and pray for our church cabinet, our search committee, and all of our dedicated church members who willingly do God's work here in this church and in the greater community to bring God's world into being. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious and loving God, in a world of such, beauty, of such autumn beauty, help us to take time to appreciate the change of season. Give us strength and courage <coughs> excuse me, to hold fast to our faith in you. May we be your hands and heart to those in need of comfort, to those who are lonely, to those who are ill in this church and in the greater community. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to just say, if you have updates to the prayer list, please let me know. Thank you.
Psalm 137. Hear the word of the Lord. By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. And the willows, there we hung upon our lyres. For there our captors required of us songs, and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's songs in a foreign land? If I forgot you, O Jerusalem, let, me, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I do not remember you. If I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy, remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Raise it, raise it, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, you devastator, happy shall he be who repays you with what you have done to us. Happy shall he be who takes you, takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. As the psalmist lifted his voice to you, O Lord, may the word spoken in your name be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Did you just hear what I thought I heard? Um, happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rocks. <laughs> yeah. The Bible never fails to surprise me. We hear the words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. And then, in the same biblical collection, we have the psalmist wanting to dash children's heads against the rocks. <laughs> well, you know, um, that's, you know, and that is what I've come to appreciate about the psalms. Complete surrender on one hand, and anger and rage on the other. Which just flares out. I mean, it just flares up. And the rabbis who determined what would be included in the Hebrew scriptures certainly understood the range of human emotions as found in the Psalms. <clears throat> and we are dealing with some real anger issues here. Um, so many times these last lines of Psalm 137 are not included in any of the readings, in the lectionary readings. They're just left out. So let's face it, it's not exactly comfortable to hear this, um, especially the one, especially for someone like myself who believes in the scriptures and believes they are sacred. So how do we deal with these words of the psalmist? Well, the psalm, like all songs lifted before God, is a prayer. A prayer that comes from deep inside the psalmist, that comes from deep within ourselves. From the deep within the very heart of a people who knew what it was like to suffer, and the question. They knew how to believe and then how to doubt, to feel loss and devastation, to rage and desire revenge. Aren't these emotions just you know, pretty much the same that we have today? You know, we experience these same ones. We, we also experience uh, you know, joy and gratitude and praise. I mean, isn't prayer where we can take our most inner thoughts our feelings, our emotions to God, to the God who knows us better than we know ourselves. Do prayers always have to be pious and proper, carefully, com uh, careful composition of words? Can't prayer be an outburst of what's really, what you're really feeling and not what we think we should be feeling? I think this prayer, this psalm, helps us understand ourselves. And we should look at it and try to understand what's going on in the life of the psalmist. Just as we need to look at what's going on in our own lives when we have these outbursts of anger with God. We should not reject these words. They may actually be a pathway to understanding, a pathway to spiritual growth. Why? Because the psalmist dares to go to the edge of the abyss, to the edge of the very darkness of his soul, and acknowledge the rage and anguish he carries within. We have our work cut out for us. So let's begin. Historically, the psalm was written around 587 BC, um, before Common Era, uh, when the Jewish people had experienced a terrible disaster. The temple had been destroyed, the Jewish leaders and intellectuals had been exiled to Babylon. 
And now the captors wanted the people to sing for them. And the Israelites refused. They said no. They would rather hang up their musical instruments than entertain their mocking, tormenting oppressors of Babylon. Some scholars also believe that the psalmist may have lost a little one to the Babylonians by dashing the child against the rocks. That would help explain some of the rage and anguish we hear in the psalm, the thirst for revenge. The people of Jerusalem thought they were safe that God would never harm them, never leave them. Well, after all, God had delivered them from slavery in Egypt and led them into the promised land, the land of milk and honey. They built their holy temple on a holy rock, a solid rock. Yeah, the Temple Mount. God had protected them, and now they were defeated by the Babylonians, and their faith was shaken. They were in crisis, faith crisis that shook. The very core drawing questions and cries of anguish. Probably the largest one, and we've heard that in our time after 9-11. Where's God? Where's God? The prophets warned the people to turn back to God, that God was not to be forgotten, taken for granted, ignored, sidelined. But the people didn't listen, and then it was too late. God left Israel on her own, and the, and the Babylonians came, and the Babylonians conquered. In the midst of the devastation and crying out to God, <clears throat> we find the angry wish for revenge by the psalmist. Now, we're nice people. And when we read these words, seeking revenge, we are shocked that these words, thirsting revenge, are in the Bible. I mean, really. The bigger shock is, to, is a reminder that all of us, at one time or another, may have thirsted or wanted to drink at the deepest wells of revenge. Some of us like to sugarcoat it and say, it's just justice. We want justice. Uh-huh. Yeah. One question that we need to ask ourselves is how to manage that thirst for revenge. Because it is part of us. So how do we control this as a nation or as an individual? Just being able to express our feelings of deep anguish and pain, as uncomfortable as they may be. These expressions are part of our prayer life as they are part of the psalmist for our lives. We must be free to grieve, to express our anger and our longings, and to put it all in the hands of God, who listens to us and loves us, even when we are at our worst. No matter how angry or tired or grieved we may be, God loves us even more in our humanness. There's a story of a Jewish woman, segue here, story, um, a Holocaust survivor. She had testified at the trial in Nuremberg uh, against a man who ran the death camp where she was sent during World War II. She had been sent there with her family, and sadly she was the only survivor, and she was hungry for revenge. When the man was found guilty, she wanted a front row seat at his hanging. She wanted him to feel the pain and the humiliation that she had known. She wanted him to suffer as she had suffered. When the day of execution came, Something happened. She saw the man before he was to be hung with the guards. He was a broken man. No longer a proud Nazi in his uniform strutting around shouting out orders. He was just a broken man. She decided she didn't need to see his life end, and she left. She, like the psalmist, will always be tied to her tormentor. She, like the psalmist, refused to play her song, refused to degrade herself and her own humanity for revenge. I wish it were easy <clears throat> to admit these feelings, emotions of revenge or anger or hatred that we feel at times. I really wish it was, but it's not. I do know this. When we come before God with our prayers and bring these emotions into the light of day, their power over us diminishes. And God is a big God. Never forget that and can handle all of our emotional problems and human uh, um, desires and needs. When God became incarnate, born into this earthly world, taking on a body of a human being, God also took on all that is human, the emotions, the pain, the suffering, the anger, as well as the joy and the love. God is always there, and God loves us more than we can ever, ever imagine, warts and all, God loves us and listens and allows us to vent, to be human, 
and God is there to wipe tears, wipe our tears, and to comfort us. But only if we're ready, only if we turn to God. We must be willing to turn to God. God is patient, doesn't go away, and waits for us to take that first step. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
to say a joy for Mary Lynn because her nephew, Stephen, was married yesterday, and that's a great joy. Uh, joy for my great niece, Marissa, who was chosen as Spectrum News Scholar Athlete of the Week and received a $1,000 scholarship for that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes. And also joy for my niece, Christy, and her husband, Jim, who are spending Parents Weekend at Cortland this weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, tomorrow we will be heading to the pumpkin patch. It's a tradition, and we'll be there with Logan, Sophia, and Jaden. Oh. oh, and oh, I went to see my senior at our court senior game at uh, uh, the other night, and they won four to zero, and they are doing great. Good. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> I knew there was another one. But yep. it just, come on up. Yeah. This is a bountiful basket of joy. Yes. Today. Mm -hmm. First of all, I have spent the weekend again watching the dogs over to Regina and Bill's. And um, I used to be able to do these little jobs around the house for Regina. She'd leave me a list. Only this weekend, I baked because she didn't leave me any lists. And I got bored reading it. <laughs> so I baked. Lucky for Spence. Yep. No, I don't think he's getting any of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. no, I, I, it, not <laughs> me. <laughs> so, so I can't, I can't do that again. But <laughs> anyway, the reason the kids went away this weekend is because they are celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. And it's wonderful. Yeah, so I'm really pleased that they could get along together, you know, away together. 90% of it is because 12 years ago, they told Bill he would only have three years to live. And he's still with us. So that, that is truly a joy. Um, my other joy is, I talked to Paula this week. She's up north with Julie and she's having a wonderful, wonderful time. And the third thing, which is top on my list, is Don has been to the doctors. The lymph nodes that they found are perfectly okay. And he's back to healthy again and he's breathing a little better because they've given him some medication to help him breathe better. So once again, your prayers have been answered. Our prayers have been answered. Thank you so very much. Thank you. God is wonderful. <laughs> Uh, this is for the joy of my uh, older sister because she's been instrumental in organizing all the complications around my mom being in hospital. Um, she lit a fire under the hospital when they didn't, when they had, there were a lot of things missing. She would switch to another ward. They didn't take her records with her, therefore, they weren't treating her for what her issues were. So my sister latched onto that and she got it all fixed out. She also was instrumental in when they exposed all the patients in the ward, brought in a COVID positive person. Everyone had to isolate and she was instrumental in getting my mother back home to her hometown in a little cottage hospital. So she was moved there uh, later on in the week there. Oh, and um, so yeah, a joy. yeah for my sister. Um, for being able to keep up with my dad via Skype and keep his spirits up. We've been talking almost every day around five in the morning for me. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. It's a pair of kids can possibly be. Yeah. And for yesterday morning, I was there. Uh, I was able to call my mom in the hospital and <laughs> thank goodness she actually remembered who I was. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> She was uh, suffering from delusions and severe memory loss, um, which is probably what caused her fall when she was taken into hospital. And they recognized that she was severely overdosing on a thyroid medication. And um, so uh, she's not going to take her on meds anymore. No. But she's got a, a long rehab ahead of her. She can't walk yet because she broke a bone in her lower back. Um, but there's a lot going on. But yeah. 
had such a beautiful conversation with her yesterday. <laughs> so these are tears. Joy. Yes. <laughs> so joyful, these are my wonderful news. <clears throat> and also, I'm just the joy of being in this church. I, jo I enjoy it every time we're here. And thank you for the people who cleaned, and thank you for Alan for the flowers. And it's just wonderful. My joy is uh, Ellie Babcock and myself completed our second adventure, <laughs> which was to Vidler's Five and Dime in East Aurora. Yes. We had a great time, and of course, we didn't find a thing to buy. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> great. Can I go and I owe you? Sure. I'm yes, to sue. Well, thank you. My IOU is to say thank you, Alan, for staying for church. It's been great to have you. And for the rugs that I know you bring in and the flowers, all of it. And uh, for uh, just thank you. Okay. Yeah, I got one. Oh. That's for the leathers that are still sticking together in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the keys are still sticking, but that's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Right. Thank you all. And we say thank you, Lord, for all the blessings and all of the wonderful joys in our lives. Amen. Amen. Okay. Our closing hymn is in the garden, and that's on the other side of your insert.
blessings of your hungry prayers and glorious surprises. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And now let the people say, Amen. Amen.